Welcome to Wisdom of the World. Today I'm going to tell a story from Turkmenistan. It's a story about greed and it is called Yarti Gulag and it goes like this. Whether this story really happened or not, I do not know. But the story goes that once upon a time there was an old man and he was walking on his donkey through the desert. He had just finished a whole day of working hard at the flour mill and he was leading a camel. And while he was doing that, he was tired. Everybody was tired. The camel was tired, the donkey was tired, and the old man was tired too. And he was singing a song and he sang, if only I had a son, a son even if he was small, I would be so happy. And then all of a sudden he heard this squeaky voice <coughs> behind him <coughs> saying, if you don't have a son already, take me. And he looked behind him, he looked everywhere, he didn't see anybody. And then <coughs> he heard that same voice saying, well, if you look for an eagle, don't look at the ground, right? So the guy looks up at the sky and still didn't and see. He says, come out of your hiding. And he says, I I'm right here, I'm right here. Liberate me from this small opening. And then he looked and he saw something in his camel's ear. And then out came this little boy who was just as tall as half a camel's, camel's ear. And he said, you know, he looked at the little boy, he said, you're not very big, you're maybe as big as a yarti gulok, which means half a camel's ear. And the boy said, oh, I like that, that should be my name. And so that became his name. Now, the old man also had a wife, and at the same time, the wife was sitting on a white carpet in in the little house, in the courtyard of the little house. And she says, if only I had a son, I would weave a carpet for him. I would take such good care of him. And at the same time, she looked through the window and she saw her husband coming back on his donkey full speed with the camel. And the husband yelled through the window, fate is looking upon us positively to the young and to the old. It seems we have a son. He is right here. And so he showed her the little son and oh, the lady, the mom was so happy with him. And she invited all her friends over for a dinner that evening. And they all together while talking made clothes for him. You know, he looked like every Turkmenistan boy with a bald hat up front and then two little tails, and, you know, on, on the back. And they made a little hat for him and they made him sort of leather, leather uh, um, apron, you know, that people that ride a lot of horses use. And they made several coats for him. And then the little boy said, thank you so much, dear parents. Thank you so much for everything that you did. Now it's my turn to do something for you. Now that's what he said. Now let's look at what he did. So one day, Yati Gulok was walking from one village to another, which for that little boy was, was, was far, was very hard. And he saw along the road, he saw a horse, a horse with a jijit. A jijit is the, a, a horse rider, a horseman, like this is everybody's dream, you'll be a jijit. And so um, he said, oh, that horse looks so alone. It, it must be, I must be able to just to ride the two of us. It must be just as easy as one. So he climbed up through the tail and climbed up on the back. And he thought, oh, that way I will be fast home and I can eat my mom's delicious food. But then so the horse started riding and then he saw that the horse was going not to the village but to the desert. And he said, hey, hey, you, Jigit, stop, where are you going? 
You're supposed to go to the village, not to the desert. Don't bring me out there. And <clears throat> the judge stopped this horse and looked all around and said, Who is here? It's me, Yarty, behind your back. Why are you going to the desert and not to the village? And the boy said, Well, I promised uh, that I made myself that promise that I would only go to the village once I had brought all my troubles to the desert. And then little Yarty said, well, how big are your troubles? And he says, my troubles are so big, nothing can carry it. Well, if you have troubles, you should shout them out so anybody could hear. Maybe even I could help you. And he said, nobody can help me because I'm in love with Gu Asal, this beautiful girl, and she's the servant of this rich, greedy man. My troubles are huge. And he said, well, my father always said that running away from a job that needs to be done, if you do that, you may as well be dead and buried. So let's not do that. Let's brave. And let's go back to the village and pick up all everybody's troubles and bring them to the desert. And the judge thought, okay. So they went, they came to the village, and it's, it was a poor village. And so the first house they came, and the lady was wailing and crying, and she says, I just had to bring all my money there behind those white, that big white wall to that house there. And another boy came and said, my father said that all our troubles are behind that house, are be behind that wall in that house. And so Yati said, to the judge, what, 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 what's happening here? Is, is there a, a, a ferocious dragon or a tiger that lives there? And the judge said to Yati, no, that is not the man who lives there, is more merciless than a dragger, dragon and more fierce than a tiger. It is a moneylender, and his name is Kam Alak. And um, everybody's life has been ruined by this man. He's like one, his web as a spider around everybody, and now he's choking everybody. Everybody owes him money. So let's go get him, said uh, Yarty again. And Chichi said, well, don't you see? His house is well guarded. There's no way to get in. Every morning, that rich money lender went down into his cellar. There was only one joy in his life. And as that is, see another bag filled with gold that he could put in a chest. And now he was filling today his hundreds chest. And then all of a sudden, he heard this little voice, a little mouse saying, Hey, you don't need to do that anymore. Everybody will have more. Uh, gold than you since the golden rainfall. And he threw, the moneylender threw a slipper at, her, at the mouse as it set up. And then he heard a little voice coming down from a spider. He says, yeah, I know, the mouse is right. You shouldn't have done that to him. Because now the golden rainfall dropped gold in all the desert, in the Karakum desert, and everybody who just digs up the gold will be richer than you are. And he says, ah, you're just saying that to make me go out of my mind. And then there was another cockroach, and this again he heard this little voice. He says, no, it, this is true. You have to, uh, you know, the Karakum desert is now full of gold. Everybody will be richer than you. And he said, no, 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 you're just saying that to scare me. He said, no, we're your friends. We're just telling you this so that you can go out to the desert and do it yourself and then sell it in a faraway land, all the gold that you collect from the desert. And then you'll be the richest man ever. And the moneylenders, you know, greed started to fill him up completely. And so he went out and he says, I, I, I have been so thrifty that I never held a camel or a horse or a donkey or anything. And, I, and he, he was at the point of calling his servants, but then he thought, no, if my servants find out, then they will, you know, they will dig first and then they will be richer than I do. 
So he says, he went out to the street. And there he saw this beautiful horse with the digit on it, our friend, standing there. And he said to him, oh, I know you. You owe, owe me a hundred tengas, don't you? Their money. And um, I will, if you bring me to the desert now, I will reduce it by half. And the Jijit laughed and said, oh, nobody's going to take you to the desert today, not even for a thousand tengas. And he says, I'll pay you two thousand tengas. And again, the Jijit laughed. If you let me marry Gu Asao, then I will take you to the desert. And the money lender said, you, you can marry her. Take her. Take anything you want. Let, just bring me to the desert. So off they set to the Karakum Desert. And they galloped and they galloped and they ran along for the whole day until nightfall and then they stopped. And then the money lender was looking around and he didn't see any gold anywhere. And then um, <coughs> he heard that same voice from Yakti again saying, Ah, this is what you wanted. You wanted to go to the Karakum Desert. Now here you are. Here we brought you there. And then he looked and he saw this little guy all of a sudden sitting on the shoulder of the judges and he just, he just got scared and he fell off the horse. And then, okay, now this is what we wanted to do. You wanted to go to the desert, now go dig for the money. And off the judges went back to the village on his horse, leaving the money lender stranded in the desert. And the moneylender dug, but found no gold, obviously. And then he started to walk back to the village. He walked one day, he walked two days, and on the third day a huge black sandstorm came and buried him alive. And with him, all the troubles of that village were also gone. Back at the village the next day, a big wedding took place between Gu Asao and the handsome Gidget. And everybody loved to tell the story of how little Yarty got the better of the greedy moneylender. If you have any suggestions for another story or comments on this story, let me know. Thank you.